so cool how's everybody else doing robert how's it going my man nicole thank you so much for tuning in uh steven Seddon, you're on time today i'm really really excited about this this is so cool uh robert is <laughs> i wish that was all me i wish that was all me thank you all so much for tuning in all right so i think the topic today we're talking about products versus services but obviously, you know, we got to get these things out of the way. Everybody else is tuning in. Thank you so much for your time. Um, highly appreciated. My name is Prosper Taruvinga. And if this is your first time tuning in, just type in where you are tuning in from. And um, I'd like to let you know that I viscerally believe, you know, that every business out there should be profitable and should be enjoyable. And I also believe that if you're an online business person, um, you should be able to create for and relate to those that you're going to be demanding money off of. So every single day, um, we sit around here for 30 minutes where I teach a four step system that is viscerally designed to help you market, scale and grow your business so that that business creates profit and you actually enjoy working in it. So basically what we will do is help you cre create an online um, footprint that would um, you know, help you optimize your business for business growth and also for profit. And uh, we'll help you build a system that helps your business operate usually on autopilot and will be generating leads for you and revenue. That's why your business now becomes um, you know, fully functional like that. So obviously, um, normally you would know and you would appreciate that I never talk about anything that doesn't relate to my business or anything that doesn't help you or my family. But if you can indulge me for a second, I would like to um, take this opportunity and this platform uh, to congratulate um, the people and my fellow countrymen from Zimbabwe uh, that are just undergoing a presidential transition. Um, my people have been suffering for the last 37 years. They haven't seen a different president. Um, there has been a 93-year-old man that has been uh, uh, running havoc to the country. And um, I really hope and sincerely pray that um, this time around, everybody else is going to be safe and sound while the transition happens. All right. And those that are in Melbourne, let's catch up tomorrow and let's figure out what's what's happening um, on the ground. But that's out of the way. Um, obviously, it's it's an exciting episode that I've come up with today because every time that people are asking me, Prosper, can you help me with my marketing? Prosper, can you help me with my, um, you know, reaching out to my audience? The first thing that I do is ask them this simple question. What do you do or what do you sell and who cares about it? Some people find it very confronting. Some people find it very intimidating because they would actually assume that people already care about the product that they're selling. But nobody does. Everybody's trying to be safe. Everybody's trying to get sex. Every t everybody's trying to make sure their kids are going to school. Nobody cares about what you sell. So you have to really, really be out there and be in the forefront to let other people realize all oh, your prospects, to, to make them realize that either your product or your service is needed or they need it um, you know, for, for, for their livelihood or for their functionality in their homes or in their business um, or in their, you know, everyday or day-to-day -day lives, all right? So with that said, 
There's also this whole big misdemeanor about do you market products or services the same way? You know what I mean? A lot of people get really confused when it comes to that. Okay, so today I'm going to try as much as possible to try and give you ideas and also, you know, tidbits of what really makes that difference and how you would then from today make a massive difference into the market that you're going into. All right. So I want you to type in the comments there what you're selling. Is it a product or is it a service? Can you please type in either is it a product or is it a service so that I know what to step onto and how to deliver this content today. I want to know exactly what you're selling. Is it a product or is it a service? All right. So you would appreciate that, you know, in this whole jungle that we call marketing or digital marketing or internet marketing or whatever sort of marketing you think there's a lot of tactics out there. All right. There's a lot of ways for you to reach your audience. There is just so much and it gets very overwhelming and confusing. But as I always say, all right, as I always say, no fingers are the same height. All right. No fingers are the same height. So there's never going to be a cookie cutter way to market your services. There's never going to be the right way. What you really got to make sure is the three M's in marketing. Have you got a message that is being delivered to a market and whatever media you're going to use to deliver that message to that market can vary. All right. I'm going to repeat that again. Have you got a message that is being delivered to a market and to combine and to link that message with that market is media. And I'm going to explain to you what media is. Media is your television, your blog, your podcast, radio station, um, um, whatever means that you use to, to, to channel that message. YouTube, Facebook, this Facebook Live is a part of media. All right. So at the end of the day, all you got to realize is once you've got all of once you've got a really good message, make sure that the market knows you're the person who can provide that product or that service. And once you're there, my friend, you're home and dry. The media can vary. All right. Tony, you say, what microphone do you use? Um, for this particular live, I am actually using the microphone for the, um, for the, for the headphones. All right. So I just lay it on the ground and make sure that it's not being disturbed. And that's the sound that I'm using. All right. Or if it's for my videos, I use the Yeti uh, black or sometimes I've got a love, love. Yeah, I haven't brought it out there. All right. I hope it's um, it's all working out. So if you really want to understand how you are being perceived on the market, how people are understanding if your message is actually reaching out there, you get people to respond by purchasing from you. Are you getting sales? Are people sharing your content? You know, that's the immediate response that you get. All right. But in this whole marketing, there's always different tactics. There's always different strategies that play into prospecting and making sure that people, you know, you know, receive that message. The biggest problem that we have as business owners is we're too romantic about the message. I mean, about the media. We are too romantic about how people perceive us instead of making sure that they're understanding the message and that message is going to the right kind of person at the right kind of time who has the right kind of pain. We are too romantic about the media. Hundred years ago, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, or if they were still in existence, they were still there. What was Coca-Cola's message? Open happiness. Who was their target audience? Anybody else who wanted to be happy, drink and be merry with their friends, relatives at Christmas, Thanksgiving or whatever party. All right. So at the end of the day, their message was being transcribed or transmitted through newspapers. Uh, through the Coca-Cola truck, through, you know, um, what do you call it? Through the radio. And as technology changed, 
How did that change? Now you see them on Instagram. Now you see them on, on Snapchat. Now you see them, you know, in whatever media that is current. But has their message changed? Has their market changed? They're still the same people that they're marketing to. The message is still the same, which is being delivered from years and years and years. Do you see where I'm going with this? Two, three years ago, a lot of people got so romantic about Snapchat. And then a year or so ago, we saw the biggest internet heist, um, you know, in front of our eyes. Facebook and Instagram ripped off everything that was unique to Snapchat. So Snapchat is a media. So if people had based their whole business and livelihood on that piece of media, now where would they be? All right. So I'm really trying to decipher so that you get to understand where I'm coming from with, with all of this. If you get too romantic, like what Tony Dorman is saying, marry the message and not the media. Because the media constantly changes depending on how, um, you know, what technology is around us at that particular moment. The media will always vary. So you want to make sure that you have down your message. So with your message includes, is your message being of a product or is it of a service? Who are you serving at that particular time? What pain do they have and what does your product solve? All right. So that's when you now play into, you know, trying to look for customers, which is the prospecting part. And in you trying to prospect, you, you go about, you know, creating content, social media marketing, like what we're doing right now, doing videos, doing events, um, you know, or any other channel that you do to prospect um, for people that are receptive to your message. All right. But now, how do these strategies and all these tactics vary when it comes to a product versus um, service marketing? I also want us to understand exactly what a product is. A product is a tangible commodity, something that your customer will touch at the end of the transaction, something that they can take home with. All right. A tangible commodity that serves a need or a want. That's what a product is. And a service is an intangible, um, you know, commodity that your customer needs and wants, but does not get to touch. All right. So that's where the whole big difference now comes in, because once you sell something to somebody, they go back home holding something. That's a product. But if they go back home with nothing, a receipt and a good feeling, that's a service. So that's where you got to start knowing the difference between a product and a service, because right now everybody has morphed it together. And that's why they are confused because they're not clear on what exactly are they bringing to the market. That stops today. All right. So every time you have breakfast, I also want you to have this visualization. Every time you have breakfast with eggs, bacon, mushrooms, uh, what else do you have for breakfast? I don't know. Maybe if you're a vegetarian, well, that's another story. But I, I want us to concentrate on a traditional breakfast that has eggs and bacon in it or some sort of sausage and some baked beans. The egg is from a chicken. That's a product of the chicken. All right. You get that tangible, um, you know, product and then the chicken still remains out there. Now, the pig gave off its service. Does that make sense? The pig gave off of, of his life. It's not just a product, but that was all his life for him to be in that plate. So when you give off of a product, you still remain as, as, as an entity and people get to touch that product and they get to understand and feel and take that thing home or put it in a shelf or whatever it is. That's a product. And then when it becomes to be a service, it's not touchable. It's intangible. All right. So, so the pig goes all in. The egg just offers a product. I mean, the chicken just offers, um, you know, a, a, a product, which is the egg then. So, 
You might be running funnels, you might be having a website, you might be having some sort of social media marketing going on around, and you might have, um, you know, whatever funnel that you might have. All of that might look similar for products and services. You know, the messaging that you might use to attract the audiences, you know, they both can work right about the same way. But if you go beyond that, there will be some recognizable differences. Because you have to convince people to want a service. People can touch a product and make a decision on their own if they actually want it. Does that make sense? So one reason that actually serves to, to, um, you know, to involve intangible you know, components is exactly what we do here as a business. All right. We offer SEO services. We offer coaching services. Nobody goes home with a website on number one on Google. Because it's a service that we're offering. You know? So when you're marketing offerings like that, it means you're marketing an ongoing relationship, strategic achievements that only the person on the other end can perceive that value. Whereas with products, you can always tell them about the features and the benefits and the performance of that uh, product. And they can actually test it while they are, you know, within the, 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 before they make that purchase. How can people test out a service? They have to go with trust. So they have to be so confident that it is going to work because of the person you are, the way you perceive yourself and the results you've gotten for yourself. So you see now the distinction, I'm starting to paint the distinction of the product you can just stop at showing them what it is, but with the service, you gotta go all in. That's the example of the breakfast earlier on. With the product, the egg, I mean the chicken just lays an egg and can continue around with his, with his life, but the pig had to go all in. So that's where service now is because you're cultivating a relationship with that person. All right. And you're going to be cultivating achievements because they are going to be seeing those achievements on an ongoing um, process. All right. And Steve Thomas uh, Thompson. Hey, how are you going, buddy? A service is so much harder to sell than a product. Exactly. That's why. I want to make that really fine distinction because with the product, they can see it, touch it, feel it and walk away with it. Instant trust because they don't have to, 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 to wait around. I mean, even if it's, they have to wait for a couple of days within reason, they have it in their hands. End of transaction. But with the service, they, they don't get to, they need to value your sweat. They need to value your expertise. They need to value what you're saying and they need to see results that have worked with other people. That's when it starts differing. And lately we've also been seeing, you know, the morphication of products and services, especially when people are selling, what do they call that? A software as a service. It can get a little bit muckier. You know what I mean? Because, you know, you're marketing to people and transitioning them from what they are used to, you know, to something that's in a cloud. All right. So it's something that they don't quite understand. And if they don't even know what a cloud is, if they look out and then they're trying to see what cloud is containing their data, you have to have ways to explain to them in a way that they actually comprehend. All right. So selling things that are intangible is totally different to selling things that people can hold. Product needs backup too most of the times. Half of the time, people already know you. That's why they come to you for that sort of product. You know? You see, to, to, to actually hit the not right, a lot of business people must be aware whether their product or their service is actually being marketed in the right way. And you have to take that into account. And Stephen, what you're saying is product needs backup too most of the times. But the thing is, with the product, people can actually test it there and there. You see, when it comes to product marketing, Steve, you know, the, the, the desired audience already knows a lot about you. They've already heard about that product and they already know who the supplier is and they know who to go to for that particular product. 
So this is especially true when people are running uh, or operating in an in a, in a, in a established market. Everybody already knows what a burger is. Everybody already knows what a, uh, a microphone is. Everybody already knows what certain things. All you got to do now is distinguish your features and benefits of why your product is different from product X. So you might be offering a new improved product um, you know, to, to, a, to an already sold to audience. All you just got to do is just remind them of what they already know and then show them what's new and then they just get it on from then on. But with the service, it's totally different. You know? Do you know what I mean? So, so maybe, maybe Steve, like what you're saying there, it needs backup. Maybe you're offering some sort of unique... Um, what can I put? Like, you know, maybe, maybe some different type of storage um, or, you know, like a hard drive or something like that. And your, your, your clients already know that they can get up to a 64 giga, gigabytes. But if, if it's just an extra 120 gigabytes, they already know the, 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 what the product does. They already know what it, what it does for them and how it works, etc., etc. And, and like you say, Stephen, have supply in place. Of course, because people are buying something they want to hold immediately. So within reason, you got to make sure that your product is being dispatched, um, you know, within reason so that people would still uh, understand, um, you know, um, you know, and trust you. Do you know what I mean? But if you're marketing a service, your audience may need a bit of education before they understand the true value of what you're offering. So you got to educate your audience to understand the true value because value is perceived. All right. If you skip the step of educating your customers, if you're offering a service, if they don't know the context of why they need your service, that will make it very difficult for you with a product. They just probably need to see it in action. But you need to educate your customers if you're offering a service. They need to know what exactly is, is going on. They need to be inspired in order for them to have confidence in you being the supplier of the Sage service. All right? So let's give an example. So you see, you know, when you sell the prospects on a, on a new kind of product or technology, all you're selling to them is that actual product. It's specs, the features, how fast it goes, how slow, I mean, um, you know, how much convenient it becomes for you, its performance, etc., etc. You see what I'm talking about there? And, you know, but when you sell a service, on the other hand, you are marketing something totally different. You're marketing your credibility. How are you well known to be the supplier of that service? So you need to instill that confidence in your prospect's mind and it has to be a high degree of confidence in your ability to deliver that sage solution because most of the time if it's a service they have to wait until you're finished doing the thing for them to see the value it might involve you being invited to their office their homes you're invading their privacy so they need to have confidence that you're the person for the job so in other words, you are now the product, all right? So you're promising something that is tangible. The only tangible thing that they can see is your sweat or your cold face. You're, 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 you're promising them a result, something they can't touch, smell, or feel. So it's a whole different way of marketing. Totally different. So the best way to create a foundation of, of trust, how do you go about it? Make sure you've got testimonials, you've got case studies, particularly from organizations or businesses that, you know, are in the same or, or same niche as who you are targeting. So if you share, you know, um, you know, evidence that there are other satisfied people, it gives your customers confidence. All right. So you then start proving your, uh, your ability to actually deliver on that promise. So when you're selling a product, you can easily show them that this is it. Touch it, feel it, try it on your own. And then they make that con conclusion by themselves.
But when it is a service, they need to find out third party and find out if other people are also happy with the service because they need to buy into your confidence because now you are the product. So make no mistake. Have a clear distinction. Am I selling a service or am I selling a product? That's when it gets all mushy and you need to be very exact as to how then do I approach my market and what is it that they're actually anticipating. If you're selling a product, there's hardly any reason for you to have relationships with the people you're, um, you know, you're, 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 you're buying from unless if you then include a service after the person has purchased um, the product. So maybe if you are selling computers, if you then have an after sales service, then there's maybe a need to have relationship. You know? I like product, it's scalable, service limited to your time available. Half of the time, if you offer a service, you could always outsource it, Stephen. But you're right. With a product, you could always sell more of it. And with a service, it's, you know, your time and your, um, your energy and the effort that you're putting out there. So it depends. Some people are good at service. Some people are good at product. But you know what? Relationships are a key part um, to, to, to both of this. So you really got to be exact and, and figure out if you're going to go into, um, you know, um, into business. Are you selling a product or are you selling a service? Are you good with relationships? Because with services, it's an ongoing relationship. With a product, end of transaction, they can go unless you put a service component to it. All right. So relationships are a key part to both, you know, the product or the service marketing, but service based businesses live and die by their relationships more than the, the, the product based companies. Because if you sell a product, like I'm saying to your prospects, they often feel, you know, like they're, you know, that's it. They don't need to know you after that. They don't need to have a relationship with your brand. Bersha, how's it going, man? Thanks for tuning in, by the way. All right. So like what Steven was talking about, time is a factor as well. You know, when your customers sort of purchase a product, the transaction may be complete, but if you don't offer a service after that, that's it. But with, when you're marketing a service, it requires a different kind of reliability. You have to be consistent and you have to make a more personal connection. So stop treating your services as if you're selling a product. Because if you're providing a service, it usually means a continuous relationship over a certain amount of period. Do you know what I mean? So your team or yourself, you will be marketing to the customer for as long as you are having that interaction with that customer so that they renew the next month's payment. So when you're, when you're selling services, you're selling long-term relationships. All right? So your service marketing plans will need to evolve, you know, and have a long-term vision. Because once you engage a client, that person is going to be there for the long haul. So that's where it starts to differ. Yeah? So at the end of the day, do you know what I mean? Some people don't quite know the whole big difference. So if you're going to be shifting from, you know, from products to service, way of marketing, people also get confused. All right. So be exact as to what exactly are you offering the market? Because if you're using all these strategies and you're doing it for the wrong reasons, people will also know. I mean, at the top of the funnel, all the things are the same. You're building relationships, trust, and, you know, whatever it is. But once somebody purchases a product, sometimes it's end of relationships. You don't have to care about them. But once somebody purchases a service, you are opening the relationship. So with services, you're not closing the deal. You're opening the relationship. And now the story starts between your, your journey with the buyer. And you have to make it a compelling one so that they continuously pay you for your services. You know, and sometimes the lines, sometimes they blur between products and services, but you really, really want to make sure that those relationships that you're fostering, people understand they're there for the long haul. Don't just start becoming friends with people just because it's almost invoicing time. 
So when you start mustering, you know, all that is required of, of the particular thing that you're selling, is it a product or is it a service? Because with service marketing, it is a journey. With product marketing, it's just a destination. You know? So sometimes it's also different the way you approach people if you're going to be selling them a service. Because these are the people you want to make sure you're working with for the whole long time. And you're saying if you're doing both, how to differentiate? If you're doing both, how do you, how do you differentiate between product and service? Okay, so you have to be clear on what you want your customer to actually receive in the end. What outcome is your customer receiving? Are they just receiving that product? Because if it is just product, then you don't have to worry about fostering the relationship. But if they're going to have a relationship after having received that product, you have to make sure that you also incorporate that. It differs from product to service area, you know what I mean? So um, it, it really depends on what your values are as a person as well. But for you to actually really, really stand out, if you're a service marketer, you need to really drill down on what you're actually offering the client in the end. You know? How far are you willing to go for that customer? Are you just doing it so that they sign the dotted line or are you actually helping them by actually helping them? I hope that answers your question there, Stephen. In the meantime, I really, really... Um, I'm excited that everybody else was on board today and we um, tackled this. Um, it's a very difficult topic. I don't want to lie to you. It's not an easy topic to tackle. And some people don't even know there's, there's that distinction or there's a need for you to actually separate these two. And that's the reason why most of the marketing is not working out there because they're not sure are they entering the market with the product or with the service. All right. So if you're just tuning in, make sure you watch this video right from the start. I really tried to make that distinction. And if you've got any questions, let us have a chat at the bottom so that we can, you know, continue to, 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 to unpack what really needs to be done and what you need to do in order to stand out in the market. If you're a products uh, provider or if you're a service provider. All right. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day and congratulations once again.